If you're in the process right now of looking for a personal injury attorney in Arizona, uh, this video you may find helpful to you. Um, John Kelly is a personal injury attorney in Phoenix, Arizona. He's agreed to not only answer some online questions, which may be relevant to what you're asking, but in addition, he's agreed to answer your questions directly. Uh, if you have a question for him, all you need to do is post this down in the comment section below, and he will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours with uh, his response. Obviously, if you need, uh, if you have more pressing of an issue, uh, feel free to reach out to John directly. Uh, his contact information is in the uh, content section below. Uh, with that said, uh, John, let's go ahead and go into our first question. Uh, first question was, uh, if I get in, into an accident, who pays for my medical expenses? Okay, uh, thanks, Ryan. The, the first question about medical expenses is actually a, a very common one. Most people who are involved in a, a serious accident, whether it be a, you know, a vehicular accident, truck accident, or something at work, um, who have, uh, will have to deal with medical expenses, and those can really start adding up quickly. Um, typically, uh, what ultimately will happen is that the adverse um, party, the party who injured you, so if it's a vehicle accident, the adverse driver's insurance carrier will be the person that will be responsible for um, your your medical expenses and that's what kind of a personal injury attorney's job is to do is to work with that adverse um, insurance carrier and and make the demands on them based on your medical expenses now if the accident was your own fault and you were the, the cause of your own injuries then you kinda have to rely on your own health insurance or there is also med pay or medical payments that can provide for you and that's something that you should have in your insurance policy um, in your auto insurance policy at least is medical payments that can kinda help provide for your medical expensive expenses if the accident ends up being your own fault but um, if it's the adverse party's fault then we go after the adverse uh, insurance carrier for those medical expenses okay uh, next question we had is uh, if I'm in a car accident and my vehicle has been damaged, uh, am I entitled to a rental car? Okay, so if your, your vehicle um, is damaged after a car accident, um, a lot of people end up without a, a mode of transportation to get around, and that's a problem because they have um, a lot of hospital visits, sometimes um, other medical providers that they have to get to, sometimes even work. So one thing that's smart to do is to have uh, rental insurance um, in your own in auto insurance policy. So that's something that you can talk to your um, insurance provider and see, make sure you get that in there. If you don't, most adverse insurance companies, the party that it's at fault, their insurance carrier will also usually kick in and provide a reasonable amount of time um, in a rental vehicle. They'll pay for the, a reasonable amount of, of time. Um, that can that can be a very short period of time, though. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, contacting an attorney to see what your op options are in that circumstance. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Uh, the next question we had was if I'm in a car accident with another party and that party leaves the scene of the accident before the police arrive uh, or before I can obtain their information, what should I do? This actually happens uh, quite often, people that are leaving the scene of an accident after they cause it uh, because they're afraid of the, the consequences that they may have. Um, another reason is that it's vitally important to look at your insurance policy closely is that if you do not have uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage, specifically <laughs> in this instance, uninsured, you may be out of luck in this circumstance. But if you did get that uninsured um, motorist coverage, which is, is a, an option you can have in your insurance policy, and most people do have that, then you can, uh, well, the first thing to do in an accident is to call the police and make sure that they take a report try to gather as much evidence as you can, see if there's other witnesses that we can track down this person, um, call an attorney who may be able to have some resources of, of looking up 
um, where this person was, if there was any witness statements. But you always have your own insurance policy to fall back on, which is your, your uninsured motorist policy, which would um, compensate you in, in what we call a, a, the phantom vehicle type of situation. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, n next question we have is, uh, if I'm involved in an accident with a person that lives in another state, what should I do? Um, again, you want to first make sure that you have the, the police come out to the scene of the accident because in this kind of circumstance, we have an individual who lives in another state. We want to make sure we have the correct information from them. So we need to get their name, their date of birth, their policy that they have, um, where they live, address, those kind of things are important and the police will take that. And actually, most of the time when there's an auto accident and the, the police come to the scene, they have an information sheet that they exchange with the parties who have been involved that will um, list on there the name, um, address, all the identifying information that you will need. You can then take that sheet and bring it directly to a, an attorney who will be able to track down that person's insurance coverage send them a notice, open up a claim for you, and, and even if it's out of state, get that taken care of. Just of a note, um, typically you need an attorney that practices in the state where the accident occurred. So if you're in another state, um, say you're in California and get an accident, you're going to typically need uh, a, a, a California attorney. If you're in Arizona, you need an Arizona attorney. Um, Another attorney in another state can actually handle a claim, uh, but not to the point of actually filing a lawsuit, which, uh, gotcha. so that's how that works. Okay, all right. Uh, and the final question we has, I have is, uh, if, I'm in a, if I loan my car to a friend and they're in a serious accident, um, what happens in that scenario? Uh, that's actually something that, um, occurs also from time to time that it's a serious situation where um, someone has loaned their vehicle out to another party and that party has gotten into an accident causing that accident. Um, what, what you need to be aware of is that your insurance follows the vehicle. So even though you were not driving your vehicle, your insurance policy is going to be up for um, examination and grabs by the person who, uh, okay. you know, was injured by that. Okay. So um, that's the first method, and then the second method can always go after um, the policy of the person who was actually driving. So that would be the secondary policy. Okay. Um, well, that was the last of the questions. If you've been watching the video, uh, first, I uh, want to thank you for your time. And obviously, if you have any questions directly, uh, all you have to do is post them to the comments below. Uh, John, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Clearly, if you have an immediate need, just reach out to him directly. Uh, John, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you, Ryan.